Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to make a goddess helmet. I made this helmet for my goddess Athena look that I posted a short while ago and as you can see it looks very pretty from the front and sides but it's not made to be seen from the back and I'll explain more about that later. But first I need to address this. Lots of times during the video you will see little glimpses of my top and it looks like I've basically poured food down myself. I can assure you it's not food. I'm far too greedy to share it with my cardigan. It's latex. I get it everywhere and I see no point in putting new clothes on to get more latex on in my little cold chilly workroom. So there we go. So here's the base of the helmet. Now I made this base quite a while ago and then got distracted with other projects. So I'm going to show you how I made it without actually making it in front of you. So here we have my lovely polystyrene head. You can see it's been a bit battered about. But I do all my head pieces on here. First of all, I'm popping tin foil on the top to protect the polystyrene. Because polystyrene and a hot glue gun do not go together very well. It doesn't matter what it looks like from the back, because you're not going to be doing the back. And I'm just putting little light pin tucks in around the front to make it face shape and then scoring in where I want to apply the hot glue it's, I'm going to do exactly the same to the other side and there you can see I'm drawing a line down the middle of the head because I don't want it going any further back I'll be applying one single line of thick hot glue along those lines and then that will allow me to apply the hot gun from the top and encourage the glue down and it will stop when it meets those thicker lines. Once you've finished you can pull it off and you can pull the tin foil out or not, it doesn't matter because it won't be seen. Now here I've started to make my wings that are going to go on the side of the helmet um, and put my helmet base there just as a reference for size. Now. I've only shown you a short bit of this uh, first wing that I made because I wasn't entirely sure what I was doing. I don't do this kind of stuff all the time. I've probably used all the wrong materials, but I use what I have. And I love my hot glue gun. So here you go. I've jumped on to when I've finished the first wing and I'm pulling all those pesky little bits of glue string that you get whenever you use the hot glue gun. And I've laid it down on the uh, craft sheet so I can get an approximate size for my other wing. Now you always need to make sure that you let your first layer dry before you add another layer on. Now what I've done here is I folded that craft paper in half and then laid my other wing up against it. And I've learned from doing the first wing that if I do the glue little strands further apart, I can then, once I've reached the bottom, go back to the top where it's almost dried and apply another layer of feather wings. Now obviously it's not going to be exactly the same as the other wing. I wanted to do it freehand. I could have drawn a pattern out. There are so many layers to this wing that would have been quite complicated and probably make it even more difficult. So once one layer is dry, I'm then going in and applying another layer in the opposite direction. That gives it a bit of a depth and makes it look a little bit more feathery when, when it's finished. And you need to make sure that that glue underneath is dry before you apply the next layer, otherwise you won't get the definition you need when you come to painting it a little later on. As you can imagine I used quite a lot of glue stick on this and burnt my fingers about a bajillion times. And you just keep layering up until you're happy with how it looks. Obviously keep comparing it to the other wing, but no two wings are identical. 
And once they're on either side of your helmet, they won't be able to tell anyway. Okay, so now I'm opening up the sheet and popping them next to each other, and that gives you a much better idea of how similar they look. So you can make any alterations you need to either wing to make it work for you. You will have to hold your wing down as the wings dry so it comes up off the paper, but obviously the wet glue will stick to the paper, so you need to hold it down until it dries, otherwise you'll have lumpy bumpy wings. Okay, so once they're dry, I'm using a gold acrylic paint, and if you use a little swirling motion, you can pick up all those little itty bitty bits of glue again. You'll need to do two or three coats to get good coverage of this, but this is just a standard acrylic paint that I picked up from my local hobby store. And here you see I've pinned my helmet base onto my polystyrene head so that I can start work on it without it wobbling about all over the place. And then I'm giving just one coat of the gold to the helmet itself. You can see how rough it is. Um, it's all lumpy and bumpy, but that won't matter because you will be covering it with glitter later. Now because the edges are so bumpy, I'm covering it with a strip that I've cut from an A4 sheet of um, quite a thin foam. So I'm applying that along the edges with the hot glue gun again. See, I've burnt myself there. And that gives the helmet a little feeling of depth, makes it look like it's a little bit more sturdy than it actually is. And that carries on all the way around. Okay, so once you've done both sides and you've got your little love heart face, making sure to finish off the edges so it will be able to be seen. And then I cut two more of those strips and painted them gold, but a little thicker than the ones I'd applied to the front. There you go, I'm painting those gold as well to make them match in. And then I took three sheets of the foam paper in red and folded them in half and then cut lots of little strips down leaving about a centimetre gap in the middle to try and create the illusion of um, a horsehair mane that goes in the middle of these helmets that looks really cool so I'm popping a dab of glue at each end and a dab in the middle and then folding them down because they do want to splay out and they want to make nuisance of themselves so I've done that now to all three and then you need to put all three together and then glue those together because they want to be unmanageable too. Particularly wants to curve and just sticking it down in the place where I want it to sit and then I want it to be quite sturdy so I want to build up that glue all around the edge now there's a strip that I've cut to go down the back to attach it to because obviously I've only got a solid front to my helmet. So once that's attached I'm then going to those two strips that I cut and painted gold and I am halving one at the front so that it goes all the way around in one piece and forms the base of the horse hair tail. Uh, yeah, tail. Uh, that makes it look more Greek goddessy, and it covers up any messy bits that you might have. And use the other strip just to tidy up a little bit further back too. It goes down the back. Now we're going to want to see whereabouts you want to apply your wings, and because you've made them curved, they should fit quite nicely along the curve of your helmet. Just apply hot glue they stick dead easy and then once they're applied I'm applying a little bit of black eyeshadow just to give them some depth and make them look a bit more battle worn. Now unfortunately my camera forgot to tell me that it wasn't recording while I was applying all the glitter 
but luckily there was one little corner that I had to finish when I realised. I just used Pritt Stick All Purpose Glue and applied a generous amount and then sprinkled on the really thick glitter that you can get. I think it's micro, mic, micro glitter, micro glitter. You need to leave it on its side to set because it won't set as quickly as hot glue. But if you'd use hot glue, you run the risk of it heating up the glue underneath and then ruining your actual helmet. I fit two more of those little foam strips. I didn't paint them because they're around the back. And that makes it fit on my head with a wig on. And as you can see, there's the finished result. It looks very pretty. And hopefully, you'll see that it's, it's quite easy to do. You just have to use what you've got, use your imagination. So all products I've used will be listed below. Thank you so much for watching. A thumbs up would be wonderful. A subscribe would be awesome. So take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.